Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to give you my final verdict on the Canon RF 24-105mm F4L IS USM lens. Now, in this case, I believe that USM is a little bit more similar to Nano USM. If you have used uh, those, there's a couple of lenses that have utilized Nano USM technology and uh, not traditional ring type USM. It's a different kind of functionality here. And in this case, this is a focus by wire type lens as are pretty much all mirrorless, like truly designed for mirrorless lenses. And so there's no kind of mechanical coupling on this focus ring. Now, if you'd like more information on the actual handling and the feature set of this lens, I would recommend that you look at this first look episode here, where I broke all of that information down in detail, and it will give you a better idea of how this lens functions and the various uh, specs that it has. I did note in that that I find this is a nice update to, you know, let's be honest, Canon has not really refreshed it, the look of its L-series lenses for a long time and for the most part they have a fairly similar look. I like some of the new cosmetic design elements that are a part of the RF lenses um, you know particularly the kind of accent ring that marries up with the camera body and kind of a sculpted look here at the end that gives it a fresher more modern look but also has a practical purpose in that that kind of inset there it gives you more room um, on the grip of the camera between that and the lens, and so your knuckles aren't pressing at all. It's a, um, it's a nice setup, and ergonomically, this as a balanced feel for a mirrorless body with a 24 to 105 um, lens. It's, it's the best balance of what I've seen so far, you know, without adding additional accessories like a, you know, a battery grip or something like that. And so I do like that kind of complete package. I'm also really fond of the implementation of the control ring. I think that that is one of Canon's great innovations and also one of the advantages of the new RF mount. The new RF mount, of course, does allow for more information to travel back and forth. And I think that we'll continue to see added functionality because of that. This new RF mount also has allowed Canon to take a different approach to lens design that very clearly is going to pay some great dividends because even their first efforts, and while at this point this is the only one that I've used hands-on, all the reports that I've seen of the other three lenses launching with the system or shortly thereafter, the, um, the consensus has been universally very, very positive about them, other than the price. They're expensive lenses for the most part, but um, in terms of their optical performance and their autofocus performance, there's a lot of praise being thrown their way. It's certainly deserved here in that um, I've used, you know, Canon's previous 24-105 um, for the EF mount, used both Mark I and Mark II of those. And this is definitely a better lens. It's a better lens in terms of the focus speed. It's a better lens in terms of the behavior of the image stabilizer. It is a better lens when it comes to the optical performance. And, uh, and so yeah, let's take a, take a look at the autofocus speed here for a moment. Now Canon, of course, is touting that the combination of this particular lens and the, um, the new EOS R body, that this is the fastest focusing body that we've got out there. And um, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of hard in an absolute sense to say, but I can tell you that uh, focus speed going from huge focus changes. You, you can't see what I'm focusing at, but I'm focusing. I'll give you an idea here by showing you the photos, but I'm going from this extreme of flower to um, at the other end of the kitchen and back to the flower. And I mean, focus going from one extreme to the other is as close to instant as you can imagine. I mean, it is just, it's, it's just there. And so that's an AFC mode and, and so or autofocus, um, if, if continual autofocus mode. But if I go into Q mode here and let's switch it to one shot instead of servo, I'll do the same kind of test here. I'm going to go out to 105 millimeters and one, two, I mean, it's, it's just that fast. I mean, and so I am, I'm going racking from about a four foot distance to about a 20 foot distance, just boom, 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 back and forth. So autofocus speed, very, very, very good. And autofocus um, is, is essentially silent. 
If you put your ear right next to it, you can hear a little, little tiny electronic pulsing as it uh, does its thing. But autofocus really is fantastic here. Um, I'm never as crazy about focus by wire as I am about a true autofocus um, or true manual focus ring, I should say. But the behavior here is um, not bad. And, um, and so as a byproduct of that, you know, I've got programmed for a a, um, to, you know, to magnify the image. And so it's easy to, to nail it down with that. And there's enough damping there to where you have pretty good control. And so again, while focus by wire is not my favorite, a lot of these manufacturers are getting a lot better in the implementation. And I will note that the EOS R body has some great manual focus aids, um, particularly their new focus guide, which is really cool. And so anyway, no complaints there on that front. Now, of course, adding an extra, extra ring onto this means that it's pretty tight between the manual focus ring and the zoom ring, but fortunately they have, they've put a bevel into the, um, the actual manual, or excuse me, the zoom ring. And so it's pretty easy to tell the difference between the two by feel. And also the, the rib patterning is a little bit different. So there's enough um, tactile differences there that it's not a huge deal. And I do really love having the um, control ring. I think that it's a great, great feature. Now, in the second episode, we took a look at the um, actual optical performance, image quality from the lens, and there's a lot of good takeaways from that. Uh, first of all, um, all throughout the focal range, this lens is exceptionally sharp in the center of the frame. I mean, near perfect in the center of the frame, which means that um, you get a lot of great looking images, you know, maybe a tiny mild regression at 105 millimeters, but still uh, very sharp. And so if you're composing anywhere in the center, probably two thirds of the frame, you're going to get really, really crisp looking images. Now at 24 millimeters, I found that the edge performance lagged a little bit and stopping it down to about f8. f8 seems to be about optimal aperture for landscapes, you know, if you want sharpness across the frame um, at all tested focal lengths. But, you know, starting at about at 35 millimeters, you're able to get pretty much pen sharp in the corners. 24 millimeters, it gets sharp, but I wouldn't say as sharp as the rest of the focal range when stopped down. That being said, images look really fantastic because this lens, unlike the 24 to 105 L Mark II, doesn't suffer with longitudinal chromatic aberrations, which means that there is a much crisper delineation from, say, like when I took photos of this of leaf edges. And so, if we zoom in here, we can see that it's really crisp along that edge as you trans, you know, you, you transition from that edge to a defocused area. Whereas with the 24 to 105 L Mark II. There was some chromatic aberration that caused a little bit of bleeding on those edges. The byproduct of that is images didn't look as crisp as what I would like. What I'm also finding is that due to this improved optical performance, there's a better three-dimensional quality to images out of this lens and um, color rendition is very good. I did find it, a tiny bit of lateral chromatic aberration along the edges of the frame. Um, but it's not strongly pronounced. It's, it's not incredibly destructive. And the nice thing about lateral CA is that um, it is fairly easy to fix non-destructively by just clicking the remove chromatic aberration box in your favorite piece of software. And so, um, you know, a lot of great stuff when it comes to that. I found that the bokeh quality was really quite good. And um, uh, as I noted, color and contrast looks good. Uh, you know, as far as 24 to 105s go, this is as good as what you're going to get. I mean, it's, they're not as supremely good um, in an absolute sense as some lenses, particularly considering that you're starting at a, a you know, a, a moderately small maximum aperture of f4. But at the same time, this lens gives you a lot of versatility to do a lot of different things. I also uh, promised to test the image stabilizer and I found it to be uh, very effective. And so you can see here from video footage, there's a huge difference between it being on and being off. And by the way, during this part, part where you see that it's off, the you know so-called video digital IS, IS is on in the camera body and you can see that it is basically useless. It is no replacement for IS on. A true optical in-body image stabilization. So I mean fortunately the stabilizer does a good job for stills. I was able to con you know consistently get you know one eighth of a second, very crisp looking images, 
hand holding at 105 millimeters. So, I mean, there's, there's very little to complain about when it comes to that. And a nice thing about the EOS R body itself is that without any kind of shutter mechanism, the, uh, or actually not shutter, but I should say mirror um, mechanism going there, there's very little vibration introduced by the shutter. And the byproduct of that is that it's actually easier to get um, handheld images at lower shutter speeds as a byproduct of that. So at the end of the day, this lens, I mean, it cost the same as the L Mark II that I've been referencing here. But in my opinion, you're getting a lot more lens for the money. Now, at the moment, of course, the biggest downside for the 24 to 105 in the RF mount is there is one camera body that it works on. So if you want to use the lens, you've got to buy the EOS R. And so, you know, not a lot of choices when it comes to that, but it's kind of hard to hold that against the lens. The lens itself is great. And the EOS R is a good, but still somewhat flawed camera, not as polished as some of the competitors from Canon, or not Canon, but um, uh, Sony, and, and to a lesser extent, even Fuji at this point. And so, you know, there's, there's some work to do there, but the great news is, is that, the EOS R system, I think that the RF mount is going to be the best part about it. And the 24-105 F4L IS USM and the RF mount is good evidence of that. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, um, you can take a look at the image gallery. You want to see more photos from the lens. I've got that in the description, so you can take a peek at that. There's also buying links if you'd like to purchase one, and frankly, at this point, you might as well purchase it in kit with the EOS R, um, because as I said, there's no other camera to use it on at the moment. However, down the road, if you're watching this, you might want to buy lens only if there are other camera bodies you know that you're interested in. But it's a solid choice for a kind of travel slash do everything kind of lens. It's weather sealed. A lot of good stuff going for it. So take a look there at the buying links. And of course, you can also um, become a, a, a patron and help to support this channel. You can uh, sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.